Uh, all right, and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this later on. Uh, for our next deck, which is going to be Vampires. We have uh, two tribal decks that we're playing uh, for our next two. We got Vampires and Goblins. They are both donation decks um, for us to play. Uh, they are both donations where uh, they are donations for me to build the deck. So I, I personally built both of these decks earlier today. Um, starting with Vampires. So both Vampires and Goblins, if we're, we're trying to win with them, we are... We're playing some underpowered cards, uh, just kind of in general. I, I'm not really... Basically, what I'm doing here is I'm not really fitting removal into either of these decks. And so, as you can tell here, I, I'm not even playing removal. Um, I think we're we're just going to be trying to have... Uh, a, you know, we're basically an aggro deck trying to have a fast start, um, trying to use some synergies between our cards with, like, L Legion Lieutenant uh, to pump our vampires, Maverick Fane, get some more... Um, and just try to try to squeak out some wins with these. Um, a Johnny is just an amazing card. So we're just basically trying to get ahead and stay ahead kind of thing. Unbreakable Formation can end the games also while we're ahead. We do have some card advantage with, with Zealot and Reaper that, that help us go late. Um, and Pillis Pontiff can be really annoying for other decks to deal with. Um, you know, how we can sacrifice like crappy tokens that we make or, or Dusk Legion Zealots or whatever uh, and make it a very problematic card for our opponents to deal with um but uh yes yeah, so that's what we have same thing with like a danto vanguard's a good card in your head so that's that's what we're going to be trying to um do i think a johnny's a lot lot better than gruesome menagerie and i i would play more johnny's if i could <laughs> we can only play four though a johnny's going to be like our card that uh you know is is going to be the card that helps us win games uh, for sure. Uh, Call of the Feast is just not a very powerful card. Uh, it's a card you see in a lot of vampire decks, but it's just not good enough for standard. It's it's not a good enough card. Um, and even some some of the late like I think if we I think if we play like some of like the four and five mana vampires and try to play like, like a late game, we're we're just going to get run over by other aggro decks. Other decks are going to go over the top of us. I think it's just going to make our like. I don't think we're going to get wins. Basically, I think the other decks will are the other decks in standard are really good, and they'll be able to beat the late game vampires. So I th I think this is the best chance to play a vampire deck and and squeak out some wins. Um. Uh. Yeah. Sanctum Seeker. I just don't like. I don't. So Sanctum. Yeah. Sanctum Seeker is okay. Uh, it's you know it's good when you have other vampires out. Um, I don't really have anything here I want to take out for Sanctum Seeker though. I don't really want to like trim on like two drops to put in more fours. You know, just filling your deck with more four and five mana cards also means you have to like put more lands. It makes it harder to like curve out. Like you have to you 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 have like a less percentage chance of like drawing four and five mana every game. And so you know like. We just have the Ajani's here that hopefully we hit the land drops for them, but you know, if not, you know, we have a lot of other spells. Playing Sanctum Seekers as well means that like puts even a, a bigger strain on getting to like the four mana, which makes it harder to curve out and everything like that. Um Alright, so my sideboard. Alright, so I I think Soltai is gonna be a deck that we're just not gonna really beat. It's gonna be really it's gonna be really tough to beat Soltai. Like Wild Growth Walker into Jade Light Rangers is really tough. So I like these honor guards. I could certainly see just not playing the honor guards and just just getting rid of honor guards and just kind of punting that matchup because, I mean, that's what Soltai just beats these creature decks. Um, so we could maybe so we could play like duresses and stuff instead of these. And honestly, I I probably should just be playing duresses. I wonder if I may have, may have forgot about duresses. Um. Could be playing dress instead of those. Maybe play dress instead of seraphs. The all right. So basically, what we have in the sideboard, we have the honor guards for like for Sultai. Citywide bust is a card that can be good against Sultai. Um, or like really, it's like for is it Drakes, uh, things like that. We don't necessarily have to play this card. This this is a card that could certainly go. Um, I have mortifies uh, for a little bit of removal. You know, so we can have a, a you know a tad bit of removal for certain decks, and for the um, hey, what's up? Uh, 
Schwaggeroni. Thanks for that sub there with uh, Twitch Prime. Mortifies are, are good at blowing up uh, Wilderness Reclamations. Uh, Bell Haunts for against other aggro decks. And Seraph of the Scales is kind of... Kind of, like, Seraph is good against aggro and control. Um, after sideboard, control is going to have, like, a... Like, they're going to take their deck and have, like, a, just a bunch of, like, really cheap removal. Things like Cry of the Carnarium and that kind of stuff. And so we can have, like, Seraph that goes a little bit bigger. That's that's a, a sticky threat that's harder for them to deal with. Um, and I also like it against aggro that, that are, like, trying to attack it. Blocks really well and everything like that. Uh, so I like it kind of in both of those matchups against aggro and control. So I, re I really like the Seraphs, especially... Uh, with the sideboard. But I guess maybe I should be playing some duresses. Um, maybe I just don't do Bell Haunt then. Because that's that's kind of too many fours. So maybe what if we just don't do Bell Haunt or the Citywide Bust and just play a bunch of duresses? Thanks, Crazy Pyro. Gifting out that sub to Chris Superstar. Ooh, we do need to open up our pack for getting to our 10 subs as well. Which we had to do after that last one. Hey, James, welcome to the channel. And thanks for being a legend. Ah, thanks, James. I like I like Reaper. Um, I like that. I like the uh, longevity Reaper can give us. Um, I think I like that more than Luxodon. And Coffee Master getting it in on this sub hype. Y'all are awesome. Keep that sub hype going. That's sub number fifteen. Let's go get two packs. All right, I'm going to update the deckless command with those duresses. And let's let's run it like this. Easy sideboard. Gnome de Gure. Get in on this armada. Sub number 16 on the day. All right, pack time. And then we'll get get to these games right after we crack open these packs let's get an m19 and an ixalan these are the sets that still have the rares that we need cool lord boswell you're doing good with simic adapts nice hey robbie all right kajali sunwing it's an underrated card and Amulet of Safekeeping. Not a very good card. Not too good of a one there. Alright, let's see how Vampires does. See if we can squeak out some wins. So we kinda had kinda had some challenges here of you know playing vampires, playing you know, making a vampire deck and making a goblin deck. Um and seeing if we can win some matches with them. Oh, I don't think I updated the deckless command anyway for vampires. Let's go ahead and do that. No, I, I don't think Amulet Safekeeping is going to see much play, uh, even in modern. It's just not. It's just not a very good card. Don't think you need to worry about it. All right, updated that. Vanguard can kill people quickly. Okay, I need to get this Gruel Frenzy video up on YouTube. I like that one. 
Oh, not you. That means the Storm Tamer is not trading anymore. <laughs> Boom. Hitting hard. So what I was trying to do with this deck is keep the curve low. So they, they're probably going to have Tempest Gen. Like that's like their best thing they can have. Wow, that's bold. Okay. Oh yeah, I guess Trickster. Trickster is... Yeah, really good. What? Just trickster main phase? Opponent, what are you doing? Alright, let's draw a card. We could draw another land. Or we could draw another lord. Alright, not another lord. <laughs> yeah, not really the right time for that trickster. Um... Seraph of the Scales is like the one card I could see bringing in here. Block like their flyers and everything. Um, Midnight Reaper is not so great in this matchup. Not so sure how much we really need an unbreakable formation. I think I bring in Seraphs and, and cut Reapers in the formation. Well, I guess Duress is good here too, isn't it? Eh. Duress is so the thing is is like Duress is a lot better against Mono Blue when you're when you're trying to interact with them and you're trying to like you know, you're trying to take their counter spells and, and dive downs and stuff like that. We don't need to take those cards. I don't really care to do that. Like like Duress is awesome in like Grixis control. Uh like when it like Grixis discard. I love Duress for this matchup kind of thing. But this, this kind of matchup is just about us getting to the board and curving out. And Duress doesn't help us do that. Yeah, getting like Curious Obsession. Curious Obsession would be like the one card I'd want to Duress. But that's, I'm not going to... It's just such a low probability that like it lines up like that. Curious Obsession would be like would be the best thing possible of taking that, but we have to We have to have our duress on time. You know, like we have to have our, our duress at the same time they have the curious obsession and all that kind of stuff. It's just not very likely. Dusk Legion Zealots aren't so good. Maybe I can trim some Zealots. All right, so I was worried about Essence Capture. I didn't want to like have my Legion Lieutenant get Essence Captured, and plus, because of because of Trickster, uh, Legion Lieutenant's not like really that great of a card to play as far as like attacking any either. Like getting Vanguard out early is certainly what you want to do because Vanguard can pressure. Like even even if they have like Tempest Gen here next, uh, we can attack through a Tempest Gen with a a Vanguard that's Legion Lieutenant. I would not mind this getting countered at all. The 
put the counter on the trickster? I, I can block the trickster though. I guess they think they're winning this race. I can just block with this 1 1. Or I can just not block and attack with these and start making a bunch of 1 1s that block forever for the rest of the game. Trancing Melody would not be a good card for us to face. All right, so Mono Blue is is great at interacting with the stack, you know, right? Like they they have just a ton of counter magic. So I, I'm not going to be playing my things that get countered. We'll just activate our Danto, the first fort. We can make a 1-1 a one, one life linker to just chump block this branch walker. Keep us at a... Or the trickster. Sorry. They could, of course, have another Trickster and Trickster my Adanto Vanguard and block this 1-1. One, one. Oh, well. Vampires with angels is cheating. I just have I just have some angels in the sideboard. Certainly expect our opponent just to be sitting with a bunch of counter spells over there. By a bunch, I mean you know like two. I should have played this land first to give the Aspirant flying, honestly. Our opponent has not been playing very good. It's been a big help to us. Yeah, I should have gave the Aspirant flying, but they still blocked like it did have it. With it. Vanguard's better than Dusk, Dusk Legion Zealot, so I just went with the Dusk Legion Zealot. Alright, Vampires. Gonna win over Mono Blue. Good job, Vamps. I didn't make a mistake there by not playing that land. We've had turn one Aspirant, turn two Adanto Vanguard, all three games now. Are we on the play? Wow, we're so lucky we get to be on the play.
Uh oh. So their creature is probably better than ours. Um, I want to make that trade because they have things like, you know, Venerate, Luxodon, and all that kind of stuff. Token. All right. It's good for us. I'm gonna say that's good for us. Marvin taking over. Maverin. Maverin took over. What am I doing here? Taking out Midnight Reaper. I think I want the formation. I'll take out Reaper and the Zealot. I think I like the formation. All right, good job. Nice, Matthew. Glad you made it home safely. You got your truck. That's awesome. How how how's the uh, truck look? Do you like it? Think it's gonna work really well? Ah, we would have had turn one aspirant, turn two vanguard yet again, but we got a mulligan. Ugh. Ugh. All right. Sure. I'm gonna say no. So I can attack with this Aspirin with this Maverin Fane. Ugh, we're taking so much damage. It's our opponent only has a one lander. At least we don't have to shock. Go, Maverick Fane, go. Dude, if this Mold of Four gets there. Can we draw a Johnny? No! My Maverick Fane. Can we draw a Johnny, please? A Johnny! Not Marvin. Stop. What is this? It's like our opponent actually has cards. Not in a Johnny, just some more real estate. Am I supposed to be playing Mortifies instead of Zealots? Nah. Alright, let's see if we can keep a 7 and not go to 4. So far, um... We've won every every time we've, you know, not mold to four. So our only loss so far as vampires is our mold to four. Oh gosh. Another mulligan though. We can't keep three four mana cards. Mm. 
I need the fourth land, but I also just want to draw something in between. So we're going to ship that land to the bottom. If we if we never draw a fourth land, though, that would be annoying. Okay, well, there's, there's the land. Good ship to the bottom. And not trading uh, with my 1-1 one, one for their 2-1 because of a Johnny. Do I want to play Sarah first? the Seraph. This isn't looking so good for us. That's a that's a good first four turns for the opponent. Very good first four turns. I know I could have attacked there with Seraph. Uh, even given a Vigilance. But I want to keep the two mana available, like the one mana for Pontiff for Death Touch and the other mana for Sarah for Death Touch. I think our opponent may be doing kind of the same thing we're doing, but with better cards. Yeah, Deckmaster's up. Deckmaster should be working. If I play a Johnny, I only get one Death Touch ability. And it's like, what are the... What are the tick-ups really doing for us? Yes, it's not so bad. I think, yeah, I think, I think we do kind of have to. I, I agree. Together... Yara, see in yourself what I see in you. was incredible you do not have to fight alone you are capable of more than you assume I chose snubby I hope you find your path. Attack! I was not strong enough. Oh, y'all are right. Tithe Taker. 
Tithe Taker is messing me up real bad. Y'all are right, I forgot about Tithe Taker. All right, so we can, can we, can we survive? So this block's here, this block's here. Uh, death touch both of those things. Um, then I need to chump a 7-7, seven, seven, chump a 6-6, six, six, and chump like a 6-5. Then we take 12. I guess I could keep I could keep one more thing alive if I want. I know there's only one death touch, y'all. Six four. All right, so yeah, not not the six five, the six four. And then we're taking 18. Okay. All right, so block. All right, this needs to sacrifice this. So we're going to five. Three of their creatures die. Their board gets a lot smaller. Got rid of the Balanced Marshals and that Bodyguard. I understand you are in need of support. Oh crap, I can't actually activate Tithe Taker. Dang, I need to go Maverin Fain. This, this stupid Tithe Taker is messing me up. It's messing me up bad. You can still fight. Seriously? We stand together. Be strong. Can't beat that. Yeah, Tithe Taker really hurt me. Kind of crazy how we were really close to being in it for the all the ridiculous stuff our opponent was doing. How we were like actually pretty close. Hey, Lee the Panther! Thanks for getting that Twitch Prime sub up in here. Welcome to the channel. That's sub number seventeen on the day. Okay, let's bring the mood back up. Oh, I think the mood's up. I, that was a that was a good game. That was a a really interesting game. I was a little quiet because I was you know just thinking so much. Um, yeah, the opponent's hand was really insane, and and you know we were on our our mulligan with our vampire deck, and we almost got there. It was kind of crazy. Um, we're gonna be a turn slow. But our hand is really good. We're on the play, so being on the play with the turn slow, we're just hope, hoping... Um, yeah, there we go. I say, hoping our opponent, you know, stumbles and stuff, or playing like a slower control deck. Uh, but we have a lot of power in this hand.
Glacial Fortress. That's what I like seeing. Glacial Fortress sounds like a control deck to me. Go, Vanguard, go. Don't you be mono white again. The, the shuffler wouldn't change whenever a, a season <laughs> changes. Attack. Oh, don't you have seal away. Blink of an eye. All right. My plan was to play the Zealot and the Conquistador, but now we're just playing Conquistador and Vanguard again. Zealot? No, yeah, we're just playing this. We don't want that to get countered. Zealot would help us be able to play a Johnny next turn. Dang. Ah, so Memorial to Genius. So this is not, not looking like Esper. We don't have to worry about a Sweeper next turn, so let's just play Maverick Fane. I think I need to run a Johnny into a counter spell. If this gets countered, then we get to play a Danto Vanguard. If that would not have got countered, then I wouldn't play Vanguard. Then I would keep the mana up for Pontiff. But that didn't get countered, so get to play the other Vanguard. Conquistador. <laughs> Conquiz Tador. Tatter. Uh, Duress. I don't know what's bad though. Our deck's pretty good. Like what am I what am I cutting for this duress? I kinda like what we got going on, but I probably should be playing the duresses. Um Am I just taking Dusk Legion Zealots out? I, I kind of like Zealots. Maybe Maverin Fanes? Pontiff has got to be pretty good, right? Like, they can't kill Pontiff too easily. I guess you do have to have, like, the other creatures out. But, like, Pontiff survives Wraths. And stuff. I guess he had to have other creatures. I suppose. Yeah, they could certainly be a settle deck. Am I holding up Unbreakable Formation in this matchup? To try to counter a Wrath? Or am I just saying... I'm just not going for it. Let's just not go for it. Because games we can lose are games where we just have like a bunch of lands in formation and we don't have other creatures. Yeah, we're not holding up a formation. Let's go. All right, Settle's probably going to be their sweeper of choice. Conquistador. No, I don't want to. I don't want to water my deck down too much with like mortifies and stuff. Um, just want to try to kill our opponent. And so I want to keep our deck streamlined. No! Uh, I really wanted that card. And play. Oh, nice. You got your second Niv-Mizzet in what? In draft? So, like, saving the duress for this turn, because, like, this turn they have settle. 
Ooh, no settle. So say I was saving it for this turn because, because then like if they would have had absorb last turn, um, yeah, I didn't want to play anything into that, and so basically force them to counter like the same turn they would have settled. Scatter binding. So we'll take the scatter. So then they can they can binding next turn that takes all their mana. Think we should have this one. All right. Orza Vamps, two and one. The power of attacking the opponent. Wait, did our opponent let us go first? I didn't even really notice. Did we go first there? Yeah, so our opponent did let us go first. We got to go first twice. That is twice as nice. Um, we have a turn one play and a turn two play. And then by turn... We're on the draw. So by turn three, we'll have four new cards. We'll have our three draw steps plus the extra card from Zealot. So we'll have four new cards by our turn three. I guess that means it's a keep. Rut row. I don't want to shock with a like goblet shrine there. <laughs> Have to talk yourself into flooding one on one. Exactly. Gutter snippers. Uh oh. Ox, this is your fault that we're that we are flooding out so hard. Your fault. Um, so I'm I'm keeping the the option open to save Pontiff. Next turn I can go landing, attack with these three creatures, and immediately flip landing and still activate it. Ooh. Um. I want to flip landing and start making more 1-1s one uh, before playing a Johnny. I want to make these lifelink creatures. I have like that one one and I can make another one one on their end step and then untap and a, a Johnny and get have two 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 life linkers. Not sure what our opponent was scared of. You know, maybe they think we're playing we could be playing some kind of trick. We are a weird vampire deck after all. Playing, you know, like a a pump spell or something. A lot of some vampire players play like the the one white instant that gives a creature plus two plus two and you can gain two life or whatever. It's like vampire zeal.
Our kinship ensures our strength is born of struggle. Alright, we got there. Opponent probably had just had a lot of a lot of lands in hand. And the risk factor didn't get that didn't get there for them. So let's play duresses over reapers and a zealot and some mortifies over the formation and another zealot and honor guards instead of this other zealot and. Adanto Vanguards. And a Seraph over this other Vanguard. And another Seraph over this Ajani. Do I want three Seraph, two Ajani, or three Ajani, two Seraph? Three Seraph, two Ajani. We have a lot of cards that are bad in this matchup. They are better at, um, you know, doing the whole aggro thing than we are. All right, just want to remind you all about Quip. We get five more people that sign up for Quip. We'll be doing another 12-hour stream. Of course, we have the 12-hour stream tomorrow. Quip is an amazing electric toothbrush. It's really nice. Um, signing up through my referral code gets a cool notification that comes up here on screen. And you also get a free donation deck of your choice as well. And your first refill for free, too. So if you were wanting to do a donation deck anyway, um, it's $20 for a donation deck. You can get $25 for, the, for Quip. Get a sweet uh, new electric toothbrush and get towards our 12-hour quip stream goal. Also, 2,000 YouTube subs. So don't forget to go follow the YouTube channel if you haven't already. YouTube.com slash ToddStevensMTG. Okay. Oh, forgot to finish out this little bit of Girl Frenzy. Alright, that's up there now. Yeah, I've I've heard really good things about um, MTGA Pro Tracker. I think you can find it at mtga.pro. I think that's the website. MTGA.pro. Or maybe I think I think that's it. But the, the protractor protractor for Arena heard good things about that if you're looking for that service. Crazy Pyro, you use a, use a pro tracker when you play burn to align your lightning strikes. Nice. It's mtgarena.pro. Okay, mtgarena.pro. That's the, the site. My bad. Pretty glad we drew that seventh land. I think that seventh land could come in pretty clutch. That should help us out quite a bit.
Lomo, is that a different tracker, MTGA tracker? Or is that, or are you talking about the same one, or are you saying that you like it? I'm not, I'm not too familiar with the, the arena tracker game. I have gone to that site, the mtgarena.pro, and it looks pretty cool. It is good to see. So getting Honor Guard be. back uh, because they could have more Pyromancers, but Honor Guard just blocks the best here. If they want to kill a Johnny, they have to attack with both of these, and Honor Guard gets to kill the Pyromancer and stay alive. Um, or if we got any of the Tutus. Like if they just attack with just Lava Runner, we get to block Lava Runner and keep our thing alive. So yeah, Honor Guard's the best thing to get back here. Seraph of the Scales is like my best draw. Best. Um, it would have been a lot better than a Johnny. So I, I think I want to play some more Seraph of the Scales. I guess Seraph of the Scales would have just traded with those as well. But hey, nice dress. But Seraph would have, I guess, made a couple 1-1s one still. I think they forgot to attack last turn. Schweigerman says, hey Todd, would you mind taking a quick look at my deck? Built a Journey to Eternity combo deck. The goal is to flip Journey and revive Playcrafter Frilled Mystic multiple times. Well, that sounds, that sounds like a good combo. Got a lot of pretty interesting card choices in here because yeah, like those are that's all you have are just those. So it's interesting to have that in this this kind of shell with like chemistry's insights and ritual sets and wilderness reclamation and all that kind of stuff. All right, the seventh land drop didn't really do it for us. I bet this eighth one will. I want you to do it for us. It's gotta be pretty hard to flip journey like to begin with I would think because like playcrafters are just going to die right away so you, you can never put it on a playcrafter die so you, you have to have like a, a chupacabra or a frilled mystic so you have, you have five total cards the four frilled mystics and the one chupacabra that you have to have one of those on the battlefield and then play a journey on those that's got to be really tough right Ninth land. All right, let's get this other Seraph in here. And try again. Yeah, Journey plus Playcrafter. All right, cool. Yeah, if it's working well. When when you do flip Journey to Eternity with Playcrafters and Frilled Mystics, that's awesome. Like that's a it is a, a wonderful. Like I mean, you're just you just have your opponent in the hard block at those points. Not so sure about the keep. I'm not so sure about our opponent's keep either. Come on, where's the white mana? <laughs> Sad thing is, like, I don't really hate where our opponent's at. That's not drawing any white mana.
I wouldn't mind drawing two lands after our first start, but not Swamp Swamp. Yeah, Phoenix is a huge problem. I don't, I don't, it's true, I don't have a, a good answer to it. I need to draw like my, I don't know what I need to draw. I just don't have an answer to this thing. It's kind of an answer. I guess I could have taken Risk Factor instead of Skewer. We would have, they would be at 10 and we'd have another thing. Honestly, I think Risk Factor is a better card, but maybe I should have taken it. Maybe I should have taken Skewer. Obviously, we could Mortify to save four life, but I think that that opportunity to Mortify to save four life is uh, not going anywhere. I think that will show itself here soon. We are good at drawing lands. Maybe a little too good at drawing lands. We need to draw one of our four Sarah for the scales. Basically, the, the Mortify just, just counters the risk factor, basically. Let's wait one turn. I know six, six is, of course, risky. Pretty sweet life right there. Yeah, not wearing wearing the contacts today. Not wearing my glasses. Just you know, I want to take a day off of wearing glasses. So I'm not very surprised that we lost both matches against the other aggro decks. That was... Yeah, not too surprised about that at all. I don't I don't think we are... Um, you know, great in the aggro mirror at all. Um, so not too surprised there. The option is, you could, in, so basically, instead of playing Takali Honor Guards to try to beat Sultai, you could just play a lot of anti-aggro cards. Um, you know, you have like your Basilica Bell Hans, Lyra Dawnbringer, stuff like that. If you want to stick on the the vampire theme, and you, you know, maybe you don't want uh, the expensive Mythics, there is the, um, you can play the 3 mana 3-2 three, that gains 4, wherever the heck that card is. You can get the Inspiring Clerics in there if you want. Um, so we could go like a whole lot more anti-aggro in the in the sideboard if you want to, because we are playing white. White has a lot of good options there. Um, but yeah, I knew I knew that was going to kind of be the case. But yeah, so we went two two with vampires. Not a not a bad record at all. Um, I basically have this deck built to kind of beat the control decks, you know, just try to try and uh, to have all of my things, you know, pressure the opponents and and you know try to beat the uh, control decks, and that's that's what we kind of did. So, vampires, I think was was a success. So there we go. All right, if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, thanks for watching, and I will see you for the next video.